composition of a stormy sky is taking a little bit of an artistic license with the reference photo that I took. I took it in the afternoon after a big rainstorm and the sun was shining through the trees and looked rather beautiful. But I wanted to have less trees with this painting and more yellow in the background. So I'm going to use Windsor yellow, which is a lemon yellow, because I want it very light. You can use whatever yellow you like. You can use a cadmium yellow, or azo yellow light, or any kind of a, a bright, lightish yellow. And I'm also going to add streaks of gamboge and raw sienna and burnt sienna so that there's some more color. Now I started with wet all over the piece of paper and I'm starting, of course, with the lightest color. And when I'd finished, I wished I'd put more color. The yellow lightened as it dried and I would have liked it to have been a bit deeper and darker. So if I did it again, I would have gone a bit stronger with the yellow. Now I'm adding the raw sienna and very, very light streaks. You have to go very carefully. You don't want to cover your yellow that's already on there. You just want it to blend in wet and wet. And then I'm going to add a little bit of gamboge to that and go in and I would have added more. I would have added more gamboge at this stage. I did add a little at the end of the painting and you want to make sure that when you're using a lot of wet paint and water that you keep the edge of your tape dry because what happens is your water and your paint tend to run back into your painting or they bleed under your tape, neither of which is very desirable. So I'm, I'm going in with the gamboge. If you're a disciplined painter and an experienced painter, you could keep working on this while that is wet. But I'm going to add the cerulean blue right now and I find that's a lot safer if you dry your paper first and set the yellows and then re-wet. That way you don't get any greens where the yellow and the blue mix that you didn't plan. So I'm going to start with cerulean blue at the top of the sky. Got some little flecks in there that were in my paint box. And I will reflect that in the ocean below. This photo was taken at Gibson's on the Sunshine Coast of British Columbia during the art walk and after quite a big rainstorm. And now while that's all still wet, I'm going to make the dark cloud color, which is ultramarine blue with some burnt sienna and I was going to add rose and then I decided to add alizarin crimson. It's a little bit stronger and darker and I find if I add it in a small amount with a lot of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna I can still wash it back. It doesn't stain in the way that it would do if you put it on just by itself. So some of the top streaks had more ultramarine blue and as I came down I added more burnt sienna and a little bit more alizarin crimson. So each stormy cloud it was a slightly different color and mine are bleeding quite nicely into the wet paper if they don't bleed as much and look like rain you can take a very soft brush a dry brush and you can just pull down some streaks of rain if you would like to as I did on this first one I pulled down streaks of rain with a soft dry brush into the water now I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue to that storm cloud mix and quite a bit of water because I'm going to do the background mountains and I want them to fade into the background. The blue will push them into the background and the dilution also. And notice how I'm using my brush. I want a nice straight line along the horizon. So I'm laying my brush down sideways and pulling it gently along the horizon line. If your hand isn't steady, you can put a piece of masking tape there if that helps you. If you feel like you can't be steady along the horizon line, then mask it off first with some masking tape and that will help you. Now here's a little what not to do. Don't outline all the mountains first before you go in and fill them in, unless you want uh, an outline showing because it will show. Some people don't know how to get that horizon line straight, but they don't use their brush in the right direction. Other people don't put enough paint on their brush. They paint with brush that's barely loaded, or they use a brush in a way that's undisciplined. So try not to make those mistakes. 
go carefully, use plenty of paint. Now I'm adding a few more streaks to the water with burnt sienna, give it some reflection of cloud color. And I and I, I this is a very loose interpretation of that stormy afternoon. So I'm I'm using a little bit of imagination and uh, just uh, keeping it in the colors and style that I want it to be in. And this this is on dry paper. You can use a wet brush to soften up the edges on your streaks if you like, or you can just leave them dry. That's okay. You get a different effect working on dry paper to working on wet paper. You get a stronger line and what's called a harder line. And sometimes that makes it look like waves and ripples on the ocean. Now I'm adding sepia to that mixture to make a nice strong dark grey brown and I'm adding some of the little rocks and islands that are on the foreshore. And again I'm combining a couple of photographs here to make one composition. And uh, I'm just going to add some rocks and some fore foreground and then around the two trees on the right I will add some grass and just some little suggestion of greenery there but in the sepia grey brown colour. It's more of a silhouette but not a silhouette using black or, or anything close to black. I'm using more of a, a warm brownish grey for my silhouette so that it matches the background colours but just in a stronger value. Now when that's dry, make sure it's dry otherwise as you rest your wrist to do the trees you're going to smudge all of that foreground. Believe me I've done that before. And I'm going to start with a fir tree. I want two different types of tree in this picture. And I've done the trunk first, very carefully pulling the brush upwards. And I'm using the point of this round number four black silver velvet brush to put the branches on the fir tree. And try not to make them too regular, especially near the ocean. The branches that face the ocean can be quite sparse where the wind breaks them off and they get more wind damage and the branches away from the ocean tend to be stronger and thicker and you don't want them to be too regular you want it to look natural so I'm just putting in those branches and I'm not worrying sort of about where the tree is growing or of much foreground around the tree keeping it pretty um, loose and just a suggestion of the foreground. The photograph had a lot more detail in the foreground. I just didn't want that. I wanted the focus to be on the sky and the ocean and making them feel nice and open. So now I'm working on the right hand tree and I'm again pulling the brush upwards to get a nice straight, well not straight, but a clean edge, clean edge to the tree. You can have the tree gnarled or bent or going in opposite directions, but I do, I do like to get a clean edge. And at some point the tree of course will branch off and the branches will be thinner than the trunk. So you have to have a lighter, either a smaller brush, a rigger brush or a much lighter touch. You pull your brush up to its very point and just work with the tip of the brush rather than more of the belly. And then you're going to branch off some branches onto which you will put some leaves later on. But first I like to put in quite a few of the branches so I know where my leaves are going to be. And one thing I want to make sure of is that that sunburst that I have masked out with some masking fluid has some good dark foliage behind it otherwise the it won't show up there'll be no shape to it no point to it it has to have dark foliage behind it so that it shows up that will be one of my focuses when I put the leaves on to make sure that that happens 
And I'm going to scrub out some of the paint to make the sun's rays coming through the trees. And there's no reason that you have to mask your sun first. You can rub it out with a little scrubby brush afterwards if you want to. That will probably work because I rubbed out the sun's rays with a little scrubbing brush and a Kleenex and that worked very well. I just didn't want to take the chance that it wouldn't work. So I masked the shape. When I looked at the photograph and looked at the shape of the sun, it came through the trees as a sort of an oval shape. So that is the shape that I drew and I masked. And I'll show you in just a couple of minutes how I use masking tape on dry paper to make the rays of the sun and make them very straight and at the proper angle. So fast forward and now I've got my little number two brush and the same color, sepia, with your burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, maybe a little bit of liz and crimson. And I'm going to put on the leaves of the tree. Now sometimes towards the ends of the branches you want a few teeny little leaves that are spaced well apart. And as you get closer to the trunk of the tree and the top of the tree, you need to cluster your leaves much closer together and have them much bigger. So you really need to be aware that you are going to vary the size of your leaves, vary the placement of your leaves. You're going to use your brush differently. You're going to use the very, very tip of your brush for those teeny leaves. And then you're going to push your brush down to use the belly of the brush for the thicker leaves. And now I'm getting around where the sun is. I want to make sure, like I said, that I have it nice and dark around that sunburst. And I worked on these trees for a lot longer than the videotape can go on. I just paused it and came back to the next stage. But basically it's the same, same method. Work slowly. This is speeded up. So work slowly. Look at a reference photo. And there we go. Now I'm using my eraser, my pickup eraser to get the masking fluid off. And now I'm going to mask that space with masking tape. Now the paper has to be completely dry so you don't lift off or smudge any paint and the sun's rays were coming through at a, a nice sharp angle so I'm making sure I get that angle and I have a little lifting brush that's got um, soft but, but stiff bristles and clean water and a Kleenex and I'm going to scrub gently I don't want to push water and paint under the masking tape. I want to make sure I lift. And now you can see if you do that, you have this soft ray of sunshine. Now I'm going to use that stiff bristle brush and my Kleenex to create a few more rays coming through the tree. And don't get carried away. Don't make it look too much like a child's painting of the sun. You just want some subtle subtle sun rays. And another thing you can do is you can use a little bit of chalk or pastel to soften those rays. Now I, like I said, I wanted it more yellow so I used some ASO yellow and I brightened up the background a little bit. You can do that with yellow. You can put it on at the end in a nice translucent wash just to brighten things up if you want to. And that's what I felt I needed. And I also, at this point, got a Conte in uh, soft yellow and some soft white. And I just softened up that sunburst. If you want to fix the Conte, you can use Fixative over the top. It won't affect your watercolour at all. Okay, thank you for watching. <laughs>